Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today I want to show you some of the craziest ways of counting numbers that you'll ever see. Here I have 24 or two dozen grains of rice. How would different ways of counting express that number? Well, even within the ways of counting that rely on a fixed number as the base, and you have a representation for a number where you put digits in spots that each correspond to some power of that base number, there's a lot of potential variations. And some of the more practical bases are things like base two or base six or base 12. But we don't just need a whole positive integer as our base number, we can get more experimental. As we've seen in combo class before, we can do things like write numbers in a negative base or a base that's a square root. And today we're gonna take it even further. And I've left some links in this description to the full episodes I made about those types of bases, but I'll also give a little refresher for any newcomers coming in. You're probably used to two dozen of a thing always being written as a two followed by a four. Because we count in a base 10 system, where each spot in our number is how many of a given power of 10 we want. And 10 to the zeroth power, which is this first spot, is one. So we get four ones, and then add in two of the 10 to the first powers. But what if we wanted to write two dozen in base negative 10? Well, now each of these spots in the number are some power of negative 10, which now alternate from positive and negative. You get ones, negative tens, hundreds, negative thousands, and so on. And we still can write two dozen of a thing, but the way we have to go about it is taking one of the one hundreds, eight of the negative tens, and four of the ones. And that's how base negative 10 would write 24. If your base number is a positive integer like base 10, you're gonna use a unique symbol for all of the numbers between zero and one less than the base number. Like we have a unique digit symbol for zero through nine. But if your base is something more surreal, like a negative or irrational thing or onward, you may need to expand your idea of which digits you allow. Like in base negative 10, instead of trying to invent a new symbol that captures negative one as a single digit, why don't we just allow the digits between zero and nine like base 10 used since those work? And in base square root of 10, a lot of people might expect that you'd only allow digits from zero, one, two, or three, which is the number just under the square root of 10. But if you try and just use zeros, ones, twos, and threes to write something like 24 in base square root of 10, it's gonna start like that and then keep going forever with a chaotic infinite decimal. Whereas if you allow yourself to use symbols from zero to one less than the number inside that square root, you can get away with writing integers as a finite length string. Like 24 would just be two zero four in base square root of 10 if I allow myself to use any symbol between zero and nine. So our goal isn't always gonna be to use symbols that are up to the number right under the base. The goal is gonna be, what's the minimal collection of symbols that would let us write all of the integers as a finite length string? Some of these stranger bases not only can use a finite string of digits to represent any positive integer, like base 10 could, but sometimes can represent new realms of integers with simple strings as well. Like base negative 10 can convey the number negative one with the string one nine. 
a finite string of digits that didn't require the minus sign that our base would use to express that. So base negative 10 somehow manages to use these finite strings of integers to not only describe the positive direction of integers, but to describe another way, the negative direction at the same time. So what if we had a base that could use finite strings of digits to not only express positive and negative integers, but a whole nother direction that integers could live? like what's known as the Gaussian integers. This clock I made for my episode about the roots of unity contains some neat complex numbers, numbers that can have an amount of a real component like one or negative one, and could also have some amount of an imaginary component like i or negative i. And out of all these 12 complex numbers, Four of these are what we could call Gaussian integers. I, one, negative I, and negative one. But those aren't the only four Gaussian integers, because to be a Gaussian integer, you just need to be a complex number with an integer amount of real and an integer amount of imaginary. So the number one is a Gaussian integer, so is two, so is i, and so is one plus i, the point right there, or a point like two plus i, or like two minus i. All of these grid points on our complex plane are the spots where there was an integer amount of a real component and an integer amount of an imaginary component and are known as our Gaussian integers. So with these Gaussian integers, integers gain a whole new dimension. Instead of looking at a number line, it's more like a number plane. We've gone from one dimensional to two dimensional. And that's why the typical way of writing a Gaussian integer requires two parts. Like this point right here would be three plus two i. And we have to split up the real part and the imaginary part, which we signify with a letter I after it, to try and convey both of those dimensions at the same time. But if base negative 10 was able to get away with conveying negative integers with a little string of digits that didn't require a minus sign, could we have some base that could convey all these Gaussian integers without needing to separate the components of each, without needing to use a letter like I, or without needing to use minus signs in possibly multiple places to convey whether both parts were positive, both parts were negative, or we had one part positive and one part negative? Could we somehow find a base that could just use a little string of digits with, with no extra symbols and convey this whole number plane? We wouldn't be able to achieve that if our base was numbered after something on this real number line, like base positive something or base negative something. But what if our base was a complex number? Now, some of you might be thinking, what about base i? But unfortunately, i is too small of a Gaussian integer to work very well for a base, kind of like how base one is too small of a regular integer to work functionally and have all the powers that base two or onward have, we're gonna need to look a little further in the complex numbers than I. There's more than one way we could make a complex numbered base, and today we're gonna look at two of the most interesting types, the first of which may look a little bit like an imaginary version of binary to you at first. Base two I. Now, you might expect that base 2i would want to just use the symbols 0 and 1 like base 2 would. But let's note that 2i is equal to the square root of negative 4, kind of like the square root of negative 1 
is i and the square root of 4 is 2. And when we were looking at other bases that were the square root of some non-square integer, it actually helped to allow as many digit symbols as that inner number would have used for a base if there wasn't a square root. Then we were able to have a finite length representation for all the integers. So for base 2i, we're actually going to want to use the same set of digits that base negative 4 without the square root would use. Because although 4 is a square number, negative 4 isn't a square number. And base negative 4 would use the same digits that base 4 likes, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And these are also the four symbols that we'll use for base 2i. And another way of thinking about why it's four symbols we need for base 2i instead of two symbols is that before our bases were just trying to describe a line. So a base with two in it might need two to the first power amount of symbols. But now we're trying to describe numbers on a whole plane, a whole new dimension, and we end up needing two squared amount of symbols. If you were trying to write two dozen of a thing like we were doing earlier in base 4, the way we'd write 24 would be to take a 16, two of the 4s, and nothing else. 1, 2, 0 oh would represent 24 in base 4. Now in base negative 4, our spots alternate from positives to negatives, because negative 4 to the 0th power is 1, and negative 4 to the 2nd power is 16, but it to any odd power is negative. But we still are able to use these strange tools to assemble 24. What we have to do here is take two of the 16s, which adds up to 32, and then two of the negative fours, which gets us back to 24, and nothing else. So 2, 2, o would represent the number 24 in base negative 4. Similarly to how base negative 4 had a two-term type of fluctuation between spots representing positive things and spots representing negative things, powers of 2i make base 2i's spots represent an even more fluctuating pattern with four terms in the cycle, where we get a positive real, a positive imaginary, a negative real, a negative imaginary, and then the cycle continues. But amidst all of these chaotic options, we do have all the same tools base negative four had, like a one spot, a negative four spot, a 16 spot, and so on. So if we were to put zeros on the imaginary spots and fill in numbers between zero and three, how base negative four would have written something, we can get a representation for an integer. Like 20200 is how base 2i writes 24. Any integer can be written as a finite length string in base 2i, just stretched out with some zeros on the imaginary spots. And if I wanted to construct an imaginary number, I could actually play a very similar game using only those alternating spots on the number for places larger than zero. And since they have a similar alternating cycle where they have a positive version of them and then two later, a negative version of them and et cetera, we're able to string together any imaginary Gaussian integer by adding on some of what we want of the positive. And if it's too much, we may have to subtract a little by adding on some negative. And for the imaginary or complex numbers in base 2i, we will have to extend one place beyond this point sometimes 
to the spot that represents the negative first power of the base, or in this case, negative i over two, like to make the number i, I would use one of the two i's, none of the ones, point two of the negative i over twos. And 10.2 is how base 2i could represent i. And since the real numbers were built on these spots and the imaginary numbers were tucked in between on different spots, if we want to make a complex number like one of those Gaussian integers, we can just combine these. Like if I wanted to represent 24 plus i, I would take the two, oh, two, oh, and there's a one, oh, point two. And that's how base two i would write 24 plus i. And by combining these potential real number parts and imaginary number components, we could build any complex number in base 2i, and all of those Gaussian integers could be represented with a finite length string of zeros, ones, twos, and threes, sometimes needing to extend a tiny bit beyond the point. And for example, here's how base 2i would write the first positive real numbers, the first negative real numbers, the first positive imaginary numbers, the first negative imaginary numbers, and you could combine those the same way I made 24 plus i if you wanted to make one of those combo ones, one of the Gaussian integers that was floating not just on the real or imaginary axis. And in fact, base 2i could represent any complex number, not just the points called Gaussian integers, although some of the other points might require an infinite amount of digits in their representation, which is a problem we'll encounter in any positional numeral base like this, including our base 10 system. But the good news is that for any Gaussian integer, we're guaranteed a finite length representation. But what if we wanted to try and achieve that task? with fewer digits, without needing those twos or potential threes, what if we wanted to do something closer to binary, but still try and achieve that task of having the new dimension? Well, since base 2i was secretly base square root of negative four, we might think of trying base square root of negative two, also known as i root two. However, when we look at this base, it can represent all of the complex numbers, but some of the Gaussian integers take an infinite amount of digits, including the number i. So base 2i is much more practical than if we try and simplify that type of base. But there is another option, which is if our base wasn't just real or imaginary, but our base itself was complex. Like if this is our complex plane where our imaginary is that axis and our real is that axis, all the bases we've looked at are on one of those axes, like there's binary, there's base 2i, but what if we had a base somewhere else, like out there? And in fact, some of the surprisingly practical bases are base negative 1 plus i and base negative 1 minus i. And we'll focus on this one because they're quite similar and that one's a little easier to explain, which was base negative one plus i, which we can also write as i minus one. And this base is pretty awesome because it can achieve some pretty similar things to base two i using only the digits zero and one. In base i minus one, these places represent slightly stranger complex numbers, sometimes combo ones. Like the zeroth power spot still makes there be a ones place, but the first power spot makes there be a i minus ones place. That's how many i minus ones you want. And then there's a negative two i's place, then a two plus two i's place. 
But even though these look pretty strange, we are able to combine them into any complex number. Like if I wanted to make the number one, I can just put one of the ones place, which was that to the zeroth power. But if I wanted to make the number two, I don't need to introduce the digit two. I can use one of the two plus two i's place, one of the negative two i's place, which cancels out that bit, and I don't need anything else. 1100 oh, oh, would represent the number 2 in this base. Like base 2i, base i minus 1, or negative i minus 1 would have worked as well, can represent all of the complex numbers, and if it's one of the Gaussian integers, it'll be a finite length representation. And it's kind of even cooler than base 2i, because although it might be a little more unwieldy to try and do arithmetic in, it only uses zeros and ones. It's like binary, but covering a whole plane of numbers. Not only is base i minus 1 surprisingly functional at representing complex numbers, but it also has a fractal hidden inside it. To find this fractal shape, let's ask a random sounding question, which is which numbers have their integer component in a typical base that's the component to the left of that point entirely zero and only contain non-zero digits in their non-integer component, typically digits that are to the right of that point. Well, if we ask that question in base 10, it would be kind of boring. It would be like a number line, and we're talking about all of the numbers that are between 0 and 1, or between negative 1 and 1 if we allowed negatives. But with base i minus 1, where we can describe numbers on a whole plane and look at all the Gaussian integers, then we get a much more interesting story. Let me show you on screen what shape we would get if we took the complex plane and filled in all of the coordinate points that were numbers with their integer component entirely zero in base i minus one. It's this shape called the twin dragon, a fractal that is self-similar, where if you zoom into its boundary, you'll see copies of the same thing, infinitely. Now these complex and imaginary bases may seem like they wouldn't have much of a use in our world now, but we're finding more and more places that imaginary and complex numbers do show up in ways that computers could be designed, in equations that might describe the universe and more. So I can imagine a future, not where humans would necessarily use a base i minus one or a base two i, but where computers might. We'll cover more strange ways that numbers could be counted in the future. For now, I hope you enjoyed learning about these strange bases here with me today. All right, have a great day. I'll see you next episode.